Radio Algeria International presents International Policy Code, a weekly program hosted by Las Fermazari. At least 20 foreigners were killed in an attack and hostage taking that targeted the Bada National Museum in neighboring Tunisia. Tourists were killed in the attack, including visitors from Japan, Italy, Colombia, Australia, France, and Spain. The parliament was evacuated, and among them were the Minister of Justice, judges, and high ranking military officers as they were debating the issue of terrorism and how to counter it. Our guest in our program is Youssef Sharif, a Tunisian political analyst. Youssef, welcome to our program. Hi. Thank you. Yusuf, tell us, what was their target at the beginning? The uh, attackers uh, really gave a big uh, blow to the Tunisian economy, uh, which, relies, which relies a lot on tourism. And, uh, and they think that by the same time, they also targeted the political establishment because the museum is located in the same compound as the parliament. So um, it, it was, let's say it was a double message that was sent uh, by these attackers. Uh, one message that um, Tunisia's economy is uh, our main target. And the other message is that we can reach um, Tunisian political uh, spheres if we need, if we want it. Yes. It is, well, we still hope that this, is, this will be the last such attack to happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, for sure, it's the first and biggest uh, attack of its kind in Tunisia's modern history. Yusuf, now it is clear to us who are behind uh, the attack. Can you tell us more about it? So, from the beginning, most analysts here believe that this is uh, an ISIS-affiliated group. Mm -hmm. uh, ISIS, uh, the, uh, the Daesh, was uh, threatened to, to stage its attack from Tunisia for a while now, uh, attacking, be it attacking Tunisia as a um, secular uh, and not a theocratic state, or, and also attacking Tunisia as a democratic country, as a, as a newly born democracy. Uh, so the, the, the threats were coming every week to Tunisia, and that's why many believe that this is an ISIS-affiliated group. And it seems that uh, ISIS claimed it today in a video. Um, it, it's not verified yet, but uh, most probably this is an ISIS-affiliated group. But not not like because, and this is a tricky part, because people sometimes think that this is that ISIS works like a machine with orders coming from uh, from Syria and Iraq, but it's not. Uh, ISIS this work through lone walls. This is an attack very similar to the one that happened in, in Paris, uh, the, the, like the Charlie Hebdo shooting, or the one that happened in Canada in October last year uh, against the parliament. I think most probably these are lone wolves uh, who claim um, to belong to ISIS, who claim uh, allegiance to ISIS, and, um, and they staged the attack. Last February, the country's interior ministry announced the arrest of about 100 alleged terrorists. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the attack was planned? Um, it, it, clearly, yes, uh, because it, this, this attack needed some coordination, uh, needed some sightseeing before beforehand. Uh, so probably the, the, the shooters came for, came previously, knew when uh, when the security was not at its climax. Uh, they knew when tourists uh, were the most numerous, and um, I think a few weeks of preparation. But uh, it's not something extremely sophisticated because they just came in with a bus and, uh, and shoot it. So it was obviously planned, but not not something uh, planned for months. Mm -hmm. Up to 3,000 Tunisians are believed to have traveled to Iraq and Syria uh, more than any other country. Is there any fear among Tunisians? So I think I'm, I'm, I'm always cautious with that figure of 3,000 because then you, you look at Morocco, there are maybe 2,000 uh, and few hundred Moroccans in ISIS and also from Jordan, maybe 2,000 and, and 300 uh, Jordanians in ISIS. Uh, so, but, but for sure Tunisia is, is among the top uh, exporters of ISIS jihad. Uh, so yes, there is fear among Tunisians, there is fear that what we call the returnees will come and, and start staging attacks, uh, rallying um, youngsters to their cause and, and destabilizing the country. But there is more than a fear. There is also strong, uh, as I, I, I could see over the last few days, there are thousands of people demonstrating against terrorism, uh, saying clearly that no fear, uh, Tunisians have no fear, have no fear, and Tunisians are willing and ready to face terror. Uh, but I think the other problem is that and many advocates of Tunisia as a security state, as a police state, uh, many of these are taking this as an opportunity to blame it on democracy. So this is the, 
um, this is the other, the tricky part. So this is the, the other part that is not uh, spoken of. And um, so more than more than the fear of having more attacks, it's also the fear of going back to the to dictatorship, to authoritarianism in the name of fighting terrorism. Mm. Yusuf, the Tunisian military and security services have launched an all-out and somewhat successful offensive on terrorists. For example, security forces in Qairawan have dismantled four networks that recruited young individuals and deployed them to Libya. Some 22 suspects were arrested, including several students. Is it sufficient to counter terrorism? Uh, clearly not. Uh, and uh, as, you, as you, were telling, uh, you were saying earlier, uh, just a month ago, that this has been ongoing for uh, years now, arrests mm -hmm. of uh, terrorists or alleged terrorists. Uh, but that's not enough, because the problem is, uh, and especially with, with these lone wolves who attack it, you know, sometimes these guys can be uh, radicalized and indoctrinated in a matter of two or three months. Uh, it's impossible to just uh, arrest everyone. It's something that needs to be well understood, first of all, and uh, eradicated from spaces, which is um, uh, through education, through uh, reforming relig the religious sector, through uh, improving uh, the conditions of many underprivileged uh, areas. Um, and so it, it really needs to be addressed uh, not only through brutal uh, force, but also through uh, discussion, through um, so serious reforms, uh, and, uh, and hopefully that will lead us to a better, uh, you know, uh, to less issues like this. An Algerian security source revealed that about 50 terrorists from Gulf countries presently located in Libya have been trying to infiltrate Tunisia. What do you think Tunisian authorities do to stop such infiltrations? Well, the Tunisian army has been deployed in the southern area in the borders with Libya. Uh, but as you know, these borders are, uh, these are desert, desert borders, very hard to control, be it from the Tunisian side or from the Algerian side. And mm -hmm. these are very long borders, no man's land. And what the Tunisian authorities can do is uh, to put as much checkpoints as possible. But then, for sure, uh, infiltration will happen. And I yeah. think I think they are doing their best compared to what we have, uh, especially the civil war in Libya. You know, the homegrown terrorists that that we're having now, uh, especially the ones who returned from Syria and Iraq and Libya. Mm. You said earlier that Tunisian economy uh, was the target of those uh, attacks. Do you think yeah. the Tunisian tourism industry uh -huh. is likely to take another hit with consequences on the broad economy? It will take another hit if the um, international media keep uh, covering Tunisia as a place uh, where terrorism is, is winning, which is not the case, obviously. This is the first such attack to happen, but I've been uh, witnessing and discussing with several media outlets, and it's always about the Arab Spring is over, the Tunisian transition to democracy is over, and, this, and, and so on. But this is not the case. Um, Tunisia needs to be covered more objectively, and, uh, and people need to come and see that uh, people here are living normally. So uh, it, it really depends on the discourse used uh, by, by the international media on how to cover Tunisia. And that's, uh, that will be the turning point. If, if there is a positive coverage of Tunisia, then for sure tour operators will understand that, and you know, tourists in general will understand that this is more or less a safe country. Uh, but if we continue talking about about, um, about Tunisia as a safe haven for terrorists, etc., then for sure everyone will, will be scared and mm -hmm. uh, and tourism industry will receive um, one of its uh, biggest hits in, in, its, in its modern history. Exactly. Uh, is it going to have consequences on foreign investment? Exactly. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's very similar. Uh, foreign investment and, and tourism uh, will be both as badly hit if, if we continue seeing it seeing this attack as uh, as the beginning of of a wave of attacks but if this is seen as something like the Charlie Hebdo attack uh, and that's something that can be overcome uh, i think we can we can save the tourism industry and uh, get more foreign investment Yusuf, a last question. What, what will be the challenges for President Baji Qaid Sibsi? Well, first of all, his uh, old age, uh, because at uh, 89 years old, it's very hard to lead and to deal with such a situation uh, that is changing and that needs perhaps 24 hours uh, follow-up. Two, uh, the, the other challenges are, of course, uh, the economy. If the economy continues declining, then there will be more anger and, um, and more uh, social 
revolution movement that will uh, call for um, a demise of the government, uh, mm-hmm. and it will be very bad in, in, in such a situation. And three, the security situation itself uh, with homegrown terrorists and with uh, Libya next door. Um, the, 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 so the, these are the, the, the main challenges with the right, the right now uh, when facing this, uh, uh, this crisis. Well, Yusuf Sharif, a Tunisian political analyst, thank you for being with us. Thank you.